Doctor Who returns with an absolute bang in The Star Beast, the first of three specials to celebrate the 60 years of this show. There were so many possible directions to go when celebrating Doctor Who for its diamond anniversary year, but Russell T Davies has chosen to use these specials as a direct sequel to his original era, bringing back Donna, David Tennant as the Doctor, as well as some other familiar faces. One thing that becomes abundantly clear as soon as you start watching this episode is that Russell T Davies is a man who knows how to write television. It is immediately captivating and I was so instantly sucked back into the world of Doctor Who. It's been off the air for 13 months now and to have it back on the small screen with such a fiery energy to it is delightful. There's so much to discuss, but first and foremost, I want to bring up David Tennant's portrayal of the 14th Doctor, as Davies has been insistent he is called. I could easily get bogged down in a discussion of numbering, but that's far too pedantic and meaningless for a review of this story. What's noteworthy here is that, intriguingly, he does feel very much like the same Doctor, but evolved in a couple of ways. There's a moment where he catches himself saying that he loves Donna and then questions if he's the kind of person who says things like that now. Little moments like that cue the audience into where this character is in relation to his past. Again, it is a direct continuation, but because there have been many incarnations between 2010 and now, a lot has happened in the Doctor's life. So he may have the same face, but he's not the same man, at least not fully. And David Tennant seems to effortlessly slip back into the role in a delightful way. He is a lot of fun within this story and also plays the serious moments within here well. There are immediately high stakes to this story because we know that Donna cannot remember the Doctor or she will die. This creates a really interesting blend of drama and lightheartedness when the Doctor does reunite with her because there are these fun moments but at the end of the day, you know this guy really shouldn't be here. And I will throw out a spoiler warning now just because I'm going to go over all sorts of details throughout this review and I don't want to be divvying it up into non-spoilery and spoilery. So if you haven't seen this story, that's your warning. And one thing I wanted to discuss is that the Doctor can be a little bit careless with regards to what he says around Donna. There's times when he's talking about the sonic screwdriver or his two hearts that feel really careless and indifferent about the effect that might have on Donna. That seems really strange when you watch The End of Time and then you watch this story because in The End of Time, he doesn't even want to see her. She's outside and Wilf says, oh, go say hi to Donna, just go up to her. But he's very, very clear that he shouldn't do that. And in this episode, it doesn't really seem to matter. It almost feels that maybe 15 years later, it doesn't really matter to the writer of the story anymore. And so consequently, it doesn't matter to the doctor, even though he does say Donna is his best friend, but seems to not care about being around her anymore. And they seem to try to get around that with certain plot mechanics. And of course, at the very end of the story, we found out that there was like a code as if she's a sleeper agent where he can just awaken her. But that has never been the implication of the show before. It's very clearly been oh, she can't remember, but she's in danger of remembering, so the Doctor should stay away from her. But here, it doesn't really seem to matter. It's not so much the inconsistency that I mind, Doctor Who can be inconsistent. For me, it's the way that the Doctor comes across as not caring about Donna's life, when really he should care oh so much about his presence here. But the way it's treated here just often feels kind of trivial. And one more note on David Tennant's portrayal of the 14th Doctor. What I do like about it is his maturity and his age being in his 50s. I think that he plays up that element of the Doctor. So he's a little bit more mellowed out, but he still does have those bursts of energy. And David Tennant still brings his all to the role, but it feels that the actor is in a different place and so is the character. And I think that based upon the previous three incarnations that we have seen, this really does match where the character should be, at least in some kind of a way. Obviously, this is a character that is ever-changing and ever-evolving, and there's no direct through line specifically, but it does feel that the character has evolved and David Tennant is able to portray that within his performance. Sylvia's reaction to seeing him show up proves quite delightful as well, with her sort of freaking out as he walks into the room. She's totally lost all control of trying to protect her daughter, and her panicking feels very in character and natural. And when it comes to Donna's family life, there's a lot of interesting stuff done with that. She is, of course, married, she has a daughter, she and her mom are still living together, and Wolf requires too much care for his family to be able to look after him. What I like most about the place where we find Donna and her family 
is the really beautiful parallel between Donna as the daughter of Sylvia and Donna as the mother of Rose. It was a reoccurring thing in the show that Donna was never really supported by Sylvia. She was always judged, demeaned, and never got the support that one should from their parent. In fact, seeing Sylvia desperately trying to protect Donna from the threat of remembering everything feels like the most she has ever supported her daughter in the show. All of this to say, seeing Donna, a character who we know to have a fiery energy, be so ready to stand between the world and her daughter, it's just beautiful to see. She is the parent that she never had, and seeing her not repeat some kind of a pattern, but to be there by her daughter, loving and supportive every step of the way, is just beautiful. And when it comes to Rose, I really do like the utilization of this character in relation to Donna for all the reasons I've already said, but I also think the character is well incorporated in her own right as well. Seeing a trans character with such a prominent role in such a prominent British show is an important and meaningful thing. Not a character treated as a joke, but a legitimate character with struggles and a specific identity. I'm really glad to see that from one of my favorite shows. I think there is a nuanced conversation to be had about the way that the show utilizes and acknowledges her identity as a trans person within the narrative. It's a discussion almost too big to be had within the context of this review, but I do think the show does give a realistic and grounded presentation of what the experience of living as a trans person in Britain can be like. It does sting at times and can live in a quite uncomfortable reality, but I do think it's largely well handled. It doesn't linger in those moments of Rose being harassed too much longer than it needs to, and one could definitely make the case that those moments of her being deadnamed didn't need to be included at all, and I wouldn't argue with that. But I do think the show on the whole does give a worthwhile and effective characterization of Rose's experience, even if some people, myself possibly included, might prefer to see a character who isn't actively dealing with those struggles in this show. I do think it is realistic, and so there's a conversation to be had about that, and I'm not here to make some sort of big statement one way or the other, I think it is a very nuanced conversation to be had. But as it stands, I do think that this is a worthwhile representation of a character within the show, and I'm glad to see that trans representation within Doctor Who. It must be said, Russell T. Davies generally really understands the blend Doctor Who is supposed to have between the silly absurdity and the grounded drama. Amid all of the dramatics of the Doctor returning, meeting Donna, and everything that entails, is the Meep, an incredibly cute and frightened creature that feels oh so very Doctor Who. It's silly, and the show constantly allows itself to exist in this world of silliness, complete with the silly bug aliens that are chasing it around London. All these pieces fit together pretty neatly for the Doctor to have to make efforts to protect Donna, her entire family, and now this strange alien creature. Also worth noting that the Meep does originate from a comic from the 1980s, I believe, so Russell T. Davies didn't invent the character, but utilized it very exceptionally well within the context of this episode. Generally speaking, he knows what the show needs, and in the case of the Meep, it was very well executed. And about halfway through, we do find out that the Meep is just a completely and totally evil creature, and that its people are responsible for horrendous crimes against other races. The way the Meep switches on a dime is just so, so awesome. I think this was the exact moment I knew I was absolutely on this episode's wavelength, because that turn is such a totally rad 180, and it's impossible for me to not be on board with it. I know there are other fans who became more familiar with the Meep since we knew it was going to appear in the show, and naturally, they will have seen this coming, but I like to not know too much about the show going into it, and was delighted to be surprised by this. So, big picture, I did have a very fun time with this special, and did find it to be a very entertaining ride, I will say that. With this existing as the first of three specials, it does become very hard to fully judge it, because as much fun as I had with it, I do have some questions about where we've left off, and what it means for the rest of the show, as well as just the entire resolution of this story. Upon rewatch, a lot of these concerns or issues that I have only started to bubble up further, and I found that the entire hole that is the Star Beast 
is fun, but doesn't necessarily all piece together in the most cohesive of ways. So one of the big things that I want to talk about here is, of course, Donna, and the way this episode seems to resolve everything surrounding the Metacrisis Dr. Donna. Within the context of this episode, it does feel a little rushed and anticlimactic. For something so big and so important where she should literally die if she remembers, and then for the resolution to be that her and Rose just choose to let it go, it it almost feels like a joke. Like, is there something narratively that I'm not understanding here? Why is something that was so significant suddenly so inconsequential? It feels like it's brushed past, and it probably is because the show knows that the other shoe is going to drop a little bit later, so we are likely going to get a couple more adventures, and then there will be some kind of dramatic resolution to all of this, so it's hard to judge it fully without the context of where everything fits, but I will say, I was quite dissatisfied with the way they wrapped that stuff up within this episode. Donna's exit was so heartbreaking and tragic that for them to just sort of brush past it as soon as they bring her back, it just doesn't sit right with me. I mean, obviously the show does go to some lengths to acknowledge how terrible it would be for her to remember, but then to just say, oh, but it's okay because she has a daughter and that slows it down and now they can just let go of it? Like, truly, what are we doing here? So regardless of where we go from this point on, I don't think I'm sold on this moment as a climax for the Star Beast. In fact, I know I'm not. And as a continuation from where we were some 15 years ago, it feels... wrong. And don't misunderstand me, I was totally with this special up to this point, and I'm interested to see where it all goes from here, and my hope is that they can find a way to justify it more within the context of her ultimate journey, but right now, that's the one part of this special that leaves a sour taste in my mouth. The first 40 or 50 minutes or so are quite entertaining, but I think as soon as Donna did get her memories back, the episode started to feel like it was rushing towards that finish line. Each moment, whether it be her getting her memory back, her dying, her not being dead, Rose's role in all of that, and the way that they let go of the Metacrisis, it all feels like they needed more room to breathe. Just an extra five, maybe ten minutes, and instead it all feels a little too compressed to fully land. And I think that up to them just letting go of all that Time Lord stuff, it all could have worked with a little tweaking. But the moment of, oh, Doctor, you wouldn't get it, and they just resolve the problem that had existed for the past 15 years with a simple hand wave, it feels like cheating, and it doesn't ring true. And quick aside here, but the line about the doctor being male presenting so he wouldn't understand, I mean, what exactly are we trying to say with that line, Russell T. Davies? The Doctor was Jodie Whittaker like an hour ago. What exactly is it that the 14th Doctor wouldn't understand? And what kind of a statement are you really trying to make here? Again, it's not like it really offends me, it just befuddles me, I suppose. What does this really mean? The Doctor wouldn't understand because he's male presenting right now, even though we've established like the Doctor is canonically and definitionally a character whose gender can just change like that. So what is the point being made? And if there isn't a point being made, if it's just some quip from Donna, then what is the point of the line and what even is the explanation for how they let this all go? I mean, there really isn't one. It doesn't make any narrative sense. And one thing that this really highlights for me is how much of a Russell T. Davies episode this is. Nobody else could have penned this. All of the best and worst elements of his era are on display here. Some truly great character work, some just delightfully fiery energy, and then a resolution that just leaves you confused and wanting answers. It is a fascinating display of his talents and some of his areas where he doesn't shine so brightly. There's a lot to like, and then if you love all the stuff of Russell's era, then I can't imagine you not loving this episode, and if you are a hater of his era, I cannot imagine what there is in this for you to enjoy. Again, I quite like this story, it's just that it doesn't all come together in a way that it really should. So just know that everything I complain about here with regards to this episode's resolution must exist with the caveat that the next two specials are not out yet. 
and I cannot and do not know where they will take us. So it is entirely possible that we will end in some dramatically poignant way that justifies this journey. I certainly hope that's the case. But right now, the show has not done a good job within the context of this special of justifying bringing back these characters. And I don't mean why is David Tennant playing the Doctor again. Obviously, we will have to wait for that. I just mean that series 4 had such a tragic and beautiful ending. No tease for what's to come, no joking around, just a depressed, alone doctor in his TARDIS. It was great. So to bring back Donna and just say, oh, who cares about all that sad crap, let's just be happy and have our favorite characters go on adventures together, it feels wrong. In a show where so much doesn't last, characters come back and their exits aren't meaningful anymore and villains are reused, etc, etc, I mean, this is a show that cannot seem to end, so very little in it actually stays dead. Within this show, an ending as perfect as Donna's doesn't feel like it should be messed with too much. And if you bring back that character, you either A, give her the same ending at the end of the specials, in which case, what was the point of bringing her back? Or B, you give her a different ending, which serves as a continuation from where we left off. And if it's a different ending, then it probably goes one of two ways. It's a happy ending, which kind of kills the dramatic sting of Journey's end, or it's a sadder ending, which is still possible. I am pulling for the latter of those two options because I think that's just about the only way to naturally continue on from Journey's End, but it's impossible to know what Russell is going to do, and based upon what he did in this one, it's hard to imagine Donna, you know, dying, even though <laughs> that's kind of the direction I feel like I want the show to go at this point, and I know some people will be at my throat for that, but I feel like dramatically that is the direction the show should go just because... I don't know, I feel that at least something in this show should matter. Most things don't, and some things should. But that's just my opinion. So, although I have my concerns about what will happen in the next two specials, and I have my criticisms with the resolution of this one, there is still a lot within here that works really well. As said, I was immediately into it, Tenant slips back into the role brilliantly, Donna is so much fun, and seeing these two share the screen once again is quite the treat. I do wish I could say I was totally and unabashedly on board with the whole thing, but unfortunately, I think that some missteps were taken at the end. And really quick, just some stray thoughts before we get out of here. The opening is so funny. The first shot of David Tennant just standing in just in nothing is hilarious. I could not believe that was the opening shot of the 60th anniversary. That is crazy. And also, I will say that the intro for this one, I quite liked it. I'm a little bit uncertain about it in relation to other intros. I think there are better intros in the modern show, but I liked it. The music is good. The visuals are quite solid. I just don't know if it's as cohesive as some of the other ones. So it's not fully working for me, but again, I like it. And when it comes to the TARDIS interior, I really, really dig this thing. It's massive, it's got style, it's not like completely bland, I don't know, they just really captured a fine balance of scale and again, style, I mean, there's just something to it that really clicks. I'm not sure how to feel about the Sonic's new abilities, I mean, it's kind of overpowered, but also not that overpowered, and because, I mean, it takes so long for him to even utilize that ability, but it's, I don't know, it's a weird thing that I don't really know fully how to feel about. I think as long as they stray away from that in future episodes, I'll be okay with it, but if the Sonic does become super overpowered again, that would be a little bit disappointing. And I will throw out that I was totally, totally surprised by this out of nowhere callback to the Stones of Blood. I was quite fond of that and it really worked within this specific scene. Like most audiences today won't be familiar with that Tom Baker story, but having that little nod within this 60th anniversary special is just very neat. Overall, I did have a pretty good time with the story, and I found it to be a largely delightful start to this new era of the show, while at the same time really being a continuation of where things left off all those years ago. Catherine Tate and David Tennant fit so naturally back into the roles they left all those years ago, and proved to be an incredible duo to watch on screen. Davies reminds us just how good he is at captaining a show like Doctor Who, penning an episode that proves immensely captivating and largely successful, and a home to some of his best and worst traits as a writer. I did enjoy it quite a lot. 
even if it does undercut itself in its final moments, failing to fully give the space for certain scenes to breathe when it's clear that more needed to be done to properly justify them. So I had a rather good time with this special, and I'm going to give The Star Beast a rating of 7.5 out of 10. And that brings me to the end of this review. Feel free to drop your thoughts down below. I don't know that most audiences are going to share my criticisms. I kind of expect many to just straight up love this first special, which is totally fine. But whatever your thoughts are, feel free to drop them down below if you so wish. I will see you at some point with a review of Wild Blue Yonder, although I will be traveling when it drops, so that one is definitely going to be a fair bit late. So I hope to see you around at some point in the near future for more Doctor Who reviews and discussions, but if not, that is just fine, so long as you know that I appreciate your time here today. And with that said, thank you very much for watching, take care, and have a lovely week.